Formula for a pivot table? Yes, Microsoft just gave us pivot by function. Now, this video is a follow up on our last video, the other great function, group by. And you are not going to believe what you see in this video. Now, here's how amazing this new pivot by function is P I V. Notice the screen tip, aggregate values by rows and columns, PIV tab. All of these arguments are the same as the group by function we studied last video, except for the columns field. Now, row fields, we're going to select the column that will get a unique list of criteria for the row area. So I'm going to select region, comma, column fields. That's the unique list of conditions or criteria for the columns. We're going to select product, comma, values. These are the values we want to aggregate with some function. Control, shift, down arrow, control, backspace, comma. Now function, this is where we get to define which calculation we want to do in the pivot table. There are 15. There's supposed to be 16, but the percent of was taken out. And as we mentioned last video, these are all substitutes for lambda. We're going to start off with sum, comma, Field headers. No means the data set does not have field headers. Yes, but don't show. That means yes, it has field headers, but don't show them. That's the default. No, but generate. This will generate those old, terrible pivot table default labels like row header. We don't want those. And yes and show, that's what we want. We definitely have headers, and we want to show them. Close parentheses, Control Enter, and that is amazing. Just a few clicks in a formula, and there's our pivot table. Now let's compare this to a pivot table. I'm going to click in a single cell, Alt-NVT, Enter. I'm going to drag region down to rows, product down to columns, sales down to values, and I'm done. Now I'm going to cut this, Control-X, and paste it down here just for a moment, Control-V. Now, certainly, there are some advantages to a pivot table. It comes with formatting, and it has a descriptive label that describes the calculation. This doesn't have formatting, and it doesn't have a descriptive label that describes the calculation. I will show you how to do both of those later. Now, why do we use formulas in the first place? Well, there's one reason. If we change something, the formulas instantly updates. Pivot tables don't. Now it's easy enough, right click refresh. But for lots of analysis situations, we want everything to instantly update. So this is totally amazing. Now I'm going to Control Z and move this. Now let's look at how to sort either the first or in pivot by language, the second column. We can't sort internally. F2 backspace. I'm going to skip over total for now. We'll use that when we have multiple conditions in the row area. And there it is, row sort order. If I put a 1, that'll sort the first column, smallest to biggest, F2. If I put a minus on the first column, it'll be descending biggest to smallest, F2. If I say, hey, do that to the second column, it's not this column, it's the total column. Close parentheses, Control, Enter. And sure enough, sorted biggest to smallest, F2. Now let's look at this argument for subtotals. But in order to have subtotals, we need to add two conditions to the row area. So we're going to do region and sales rep. Let's see how that looks. We have everything sorted. Here's all the Midwests. And then sales rep and all the calculation and the totals. But notice F2, we're actually sorting the second column sales rep biggest to smallest. But if I change this to 3, there's a 3, Control Enter, it's actually sorting biggest to smallest for each individual sales rep group. Biggest to smallest, biggest to smallest, and so on. Now notice we didn't do anything with the argument for subtotals, but by default, they were added when we added two conditions to the row area. Up at the top, F2. If we go to the row total depth argument, we are using the default grand and subtotals. But we could use minus 2 to show everything at the top. Control Enter. 
grand total at the top. And sure enough, there's the subtotals at the top. Control Z, F2, backspace, comma, column total depth. That comes into play when you have multiple conditions in the column field area, comma. You can sort by the column, comma, and filter is what we want to look at. Now, this filter array argument works exactly like the include argument in the filter function. We need to give it trues and falses so it can filter the data set. This functions like a filter in a pivot table. So if I say, hey, region, are you not equal to west? Now that's going to act as a filter. And when I enter that, no more west. Now next, I want to create a daily sales report. I'm going to move this down, equals PIV tab. We'll put the date field in the row area. We'll skip over columns. Values, we're going to do cost of goods sold. The function, we'll use average daily cost of goods sold, comma 3 for headers, close parentheses, and Control Enter. I'll add some formatting, date, and how about comma. And there it is, average daily cost of goods sold. But what if we wanted to roll this up into month? Well, we're going to have to make a calculation on this column here. And I'm not going to need the field name, because that will cause an error. So I'll start off with cost of goods sold. No field name. We definitely want to use 0 here, no headers. And for date, we're going to put just the dates without the field name. And we're going to convert them to end of the month using end of the month function. Now, this is one of those analysis tool pack functions created back in the 90s. And a bunch of functions like end of month cannot do a function argument array operation unless you do double negative. Now, we want to convert all of those dates, comma, to the end of the month. So how many months do I want to jump forward? Zero. That means for each date here, it'll just show me the end of that particular month. There's our monthly average for all of the months in that data set. Now, F2, I would like to have some labels at the top. And just like we did last video, we're going to use V stack, Alt Enter, Enter to add line breaks. And for array 1, we're going to use array syntax, curly brackets house the array. We're going to use text, so it's got to be in double quotes. We have to use a comma to go over a column. That means spill across the columns. Semicolon is spill down the rows. And we'll say average cost of goods sold. Close off the array constant, comma for array 1. At the end, we close parentheses and Control Enter. And that is a thing of beauty. Now I'm going to cut this and put it down here off to the side. And I'm going to move all of this over here, because this is going to be the finale. Here's what we're after. Here's our pivot table. I want to just be able to change this to whichever field. There's sales rep. That's in the row. Product in the column. Calculation will be made on sales column. We want to select the region, and we want to say what region. And there's our report. Now, I'd like to see a pivot table do that. Now, what that means, we're selecting columns. So we're going to have to look up different columns. We also have a changing situation here. This column may change. And so we need this to update. If I change this to sales rep, notice that changes too. Now, first things first, we need a drop down to select the correct column header or field name. So I'm going to click in this cell, go up to Data, Data Validation, or use the keyboard, Alt-D-L, Tab, L, Tab. And I'm going to highlight just these three. Those are going to be what can be in the row or column. Click OK. I'm going to copy this cell, Control-V, Control-V. Now we have drop downs there, Alt-D-L, Tab, L, Tab. We want sales or cost of goods sold. Click OK. Now we have that drop down. Now what we need is if we pick a column, we want a unique list from that column to show up here. So over here, I'm first going to look up a column, which is in essence the trick we're going to need throughout this solution. I need to look up sales rep, comma. 
lookup array, one, two, three, comma, return array. Well, since I have multiple rows, control, shift, down arrow, control, backspace, when it selects one, two, or three, it'll deliver the whole column. Close and enter. F2, sort unique. Close, close. Control, enter. Now we click over here, Alt D, L, Tab, L. I'm going to click in the top cell and then type pound. Click OK. So right now, it's going to show sales rep. But when I change this to region, no worries, totally updates. Now in row field, we need to look up whatever column is in that cell. Right here, look up that column. Cost goods sold, look up that column. Even over here, we're going to need to look up that column. And how do we look up a column? X lookup. I'm looking up region, comma, within these three, comma, highlighting all three. And it does exact match, so we can close parentheses. That right there, if I hover, that looks up the column. For column, we're looking up product, comma, within the same three cells, comma, and the same three columns. Close. So we have columns, now value. I'm looking up whatever is there in these two columns, comma, and we're going to get the full two columns of values we potentially can aggregate. That's values. We're going to do the same X look up here. So we're looking up sales rep, comma, within these three cells, comma, three columns, close. And then instead of hard coding it in, we're simply going to say BAM. And that's our initial formula without a label for the calculation. And just like that, if I change this to product, this to sales rep, and this to region, and I want, and we'll fix that. We'll have a message, and I want west. So all of this is working. Now the question is, how do we get a label right here? Well, I'm going to show you a trick I learned from Excel Lambda. Now, this is a spilled array, so I need to know how many rows are in that spilled array, so pound. We do exactly the same thing for columns. We're going to create a sequence of numbers with six rows, six columns, Control-Enter. That's just the numbers 1 to 36, which represent all of these cells, and all we're going to do is say, if you're equal to 1, put a label. Otherwise, just take the report. So if sequence is equal to 1, then please give me something like sum of and join it to whatever's in that cell. So that's value if true, comma, and the value if false is just going to be the array. Now we'll do this in let to make it all complete, but when I Control Enter, that is amazing. And now we have a label that describes the calculation. So we'll create a let with 1, 2, and the sequence variable. So far I have let and one variable, p, for the pivot by report. We need to count rows. And what are we counting? The variable p, c for columns, how many columns are in p. And for sequence, rows is going to use the variable right there, r comma, variable right there, C, close parentheses, comma. Now, I like to check as I go along. And I'm pretty sure these are correct. Alt, Enter. I'm just going to check the sequence. This, in essence, is where we put our formula. But I'm going to check a variable. And sure enough, that looks like it's working. You could check row to whichever variable you want to check. Now let's make the formula result that let will deliver. Sequence is equal to 1. Then we're going to create our label in value if true. So sum of, and we're going to link it up to whatever that column for aggregating is, comma. The value if false is simply p. So I'm going to put p. Close on if. Control Enter. And that is a thing of beauty. Change this to sales. And sure enough, it totally updates. Now, the only question is, when I change this to sales rep, we're going to get a value. So I'm going to add something to the bottom here. I'm going to say if error, comma, and then value if error, you put some message. I'm going to put if error, fix filter column or condition. So right now it says fix. 
when I come up and change this back to region, now it's working. Now the cherry on top for this is if we could somehow create a dynamic function. And guess what? Right after I finished this video, but before I finished editing, Lester Potts posted a solution. Our teammates are amazing. So here's how it works. I have a list of the functions, and I left out percent of because Microsoft took that one out, and product doesn't seem to work. I created data validation, and F2, we're going to go to where the sum is, Alt-Enter. And in the function argument right here, we're going to use choose. Choose is a lookup function that takes an index number. In our case, it would be 1 to 14, I think. And then you just list all the items. And the amazing thing about choose, different than XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, and INDEX, is it can look up anything. It can even look up functions. So choose index number. How are we going to do that? X match. That tells us the relative position. We're looking up this comma within this list right here. Close parentheses. That's the index number comma. And oops, I forgot to copy something. Watch this. This is a great trick. I need to suspend the formula while I go do something in another cell. I'm just going to type an apostrophe. It makes a ridiculous wrap text. I already type these out with a comma between each one. Now I'm going to select the cell and unwrap F2, unsuspend, get rid of that apostrophe. There's all of the values right there, so Control-V. And then at the end, close parentheses. I already have the comma there. Actually, I'm going to comma and then get rid of this one. And I got my fingers crossed, Control-Enter. Wow, if this works, I'm going to be so amazed. It worked to get the average, F2. But now, instead of hard coding this in, backspace, backspace, we're going to click that cell, ampersand, double quote. I got my fingers crossed, Control-Enter. Change this to min. Change this to median, the one in the middle in a sorted list. And that is totally amazing. Now, my poor dyslexic eyes never picked up that that's not a field name. That's because we only looked up the entire column without the field name. So in the top cell, F2, we're going to, for each X lookup, instead of row 3, we want to go up to row 2. So I'm going to change 2. 2, 2, and a 2 down here. Control-Enter. And that's much better. That's an actual field name. If I change this to sales rep and this one to product, this to average, everything's looking good. Now, there's another scenario that this might not work. If we select all the same columns, we're going to get an error. So we can change the error message. All right, so I changed it. So I added something to the end. Or don't use the same column for row and column and filter criteria. Now we'll change it up. Now the last thing we probably want to do is add some formatting. I'm going to add comma to all the numbers. Since the outside of the report is always going to be text, I'm going to use Control-B. And as we saw last video, we could use some conditional formatting if we wanted to format it more. All right, this video was an epic video. We saw how to make a completely dynamic pivot table using pivot by with all the inputs coming from cells. We also saw a way to use pivot by to create a monthly sales report. And we started it off with all the basics of this amazing pivot by function to make wonderful formula pivot table reports. All right, we'll see you next Excel magic trick.